Okay, this is the first data visualization stream, uh, screen. Uh, this is the map feature. So we've done our data, now we can start to visualize that data in a number of different ways. For the map, um, we're going to click on a new layer. Um, for what my project is doing, um, the map is really significant in that it can help show uh, geographically where Luther and all his letters are going to and, and uh, you know how spatially uh, and geographically how these different correspondence are related to each other. So uh, we're going to give this name maybe correspondence. Um, for this uh, type of layer, um, you can either do points, so individual uh, points on the map, or you can do point to point trying to show the relationship. With letter writing, point to point is going to be what we're going for. The source places is going to be our source location. Target places are destination location. Those are corresponding with um, the columns in our data set as well. So Palladio has uploaded those for us. Um, the tooltip label, um, when we uh, scan over uh, the different points in the map, do we want it to show coordinates? Um, no, let's probably, let's do the place name. That's probably more uh, significant and a little bit more educational <laughs> in, in uh, what we're trying to do here. So we'll do uh, place name, color is fine. Um, we'll do uh, show links and then we'll size the points as well. So the places that have um, the, num the most number of letters coming out of them, uh, the those will be larger areas. So once all these are set up, we can then add a layer. All right, so the correspondence layer is now in, uh, in effect. We can always mute it if we want to just by clicking that eyeball. Open it up again. Now we can zoom in here, kind of see how this looks. Mess that there. So um, this uh, large uh, circle in the middle here, this is Wartburg Castle. This is where Luther is uh, in exile. And then all of these little points are various uh, places or people of correspondence. So geographically, where is he writing to? Um, he's writing to the Low Countries, Belgium in particular. Um, he's writing especially to Wittenberg in that area around there where he uh, is teaching. Um, there's a couple other places in southern Germany and in Switzerland where Reformation ideas are starting to spread and so there's some interaction there. One thing that I also included in, the, in these data sets um, were letters written by um, some other major figures of the Reformation that Luther was in correspondence with um, but who were also uh, dealing with similar um, issues that Luther was concerned about. So looking at some of uh, Philip Melanchthon's letters, um, who is Luther, he's Luther's kind of right-hand man in Wittenberg. He's also writing letters to these leaders in Switzerland um, and in France as well. So that's kind of the, that's the map feature. Um, that's one thing that we can do. Through Palladio, you can also add uh, a number of other different layers. So you can actually upload a particular type of map um, that you want your data points presented on. So if you had an old map of Europe, or if you're doing a project on uh, somewhere in America, you can actually, there's a way that you can upload the map and then have your points projected on those if you'd like. Um, you can do different backgrounds as well. So right now we're just doing kind of land. Um, you can do satellite. So if we wanted to add that layer, um, you can certainly do that too. Um, you can add, um, Get rid of that one. You can add uh, street maps, buildings and areas, terrain. There's some other different tiles you can have as, as the background um, as well. So uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with the map. I'll just keep with kind of the generic um, uh, background, just land and sea, and uh, we'll go from there. So the map is the first major way that you can visualize the data through Palladio. The next way is the graph. Um, for those of you who have used tools like Gephi, um, this again, rather than showing the geographic relationship, just shows um, uh, the connection, the correspondence between multiple figures. Um, so for the source, we'll do uh, author, so whoever's writing the letter. Um, we'll highlight the, whoever the author is. The target will be the recipient. And again, these are coordinating uh, all of these dimensions are columns on our data sets. Um, Okay, so we'll have uh, the target be the recipient. We'll show the links, and then we can size the nodes based on the number of letters that are written. Okay, and we can move these around if we want to. 
Again, this kind of helps us visualize the data in a number of ways, um, looking at who is writing who, not just uh, geographically in the map, but then also seeing um, you know, the major figures in Luther's kind of circle, who they're writing to, who they're communicating with during this nine month period. Um, so you see, at least according to the data, the major figures, obviously you have Luther, um, his right-hand man in Wittenberg, uh, Philip Melanchthon, and then George Spalatin, who's also a major uh, ally um, working for Luther on behalf of the prince that is over the, the area of Germany that Luther is, is from. Um, so those are the kind of the three main characters. You can see that there are also are some corresponding figures here as well. Erasmus is going to play a huge part. Capito as well. There's a couple of controversies for indulgences that Capito acts as a, as a middleman. So this is another way, the graphs portion is another way to, to visualize the data and you can manipulate it in a number of different ways um, and go from there. If you wanted to highlight instead uh, the uh, recipients, you can. So these are all the people that are receiving letters, highlighting uh, the author just shows you who is uh, delivering the letters, who's initiating the letters. And we'll show uh, in a little bit how there's even multiple ways that you can manipulate this data to uh, you know, look at it from a particular point of time. Um, we can narrow it down to only letters written about particular subjects or letters that uh, uh, mention particular people, um, but we'll leave it at that for now. So that's the, that's the graph portion. Uh, another way to visualize the data is the table, and this actually is just um, essentially allows us to put all the information for our data. Um, so it would be very similar to what we have in our uh, uh, Excel worksheet, essentially. If you want to show the data that people are working with, that they're seeing on the program, this is the way to do it. So um, you have, uh, we'll have letter ID as kind of the base. Um, uh, the base row dimension and then what we'll do is we can add other information as well so we'll add the author for each letter we'll add the uh, the date for each letter and we can order them and kind of work them around depending on how we want them displayed let's see let's add the obviously the recipient is important for these letters we'll add the source location so where the letter is being written from and we'll add the destination location for the letter. Okay, so as I'm clicking these, you can see that they're coming uh, onto the, the chart behind them, and then we can rearrange on here as well. Um, anything else we should add? Let's see, let's add the mentions and the subjects. Okay, so this is essentially, we're distilling the, ba the most important information from our letters uh, data. And then this allows whoever is looking or viewing the project to um, kind of see the data that we're working with um, just laid out right in front of them and they can organize in a lot of different ways so let's order uh, in chronological order um, by letter date and again this is the this allows them to see which uh, particular letter we're talking about um, you know who it's uh, when it's written who it's from who it's to where it's coming from where it's going what the letter talks about and then who the uh, letters mention those types of things. And you can always go back and you can add more. So if someone's really concerned about, you know, where can I find the text of this letter, you can go back to the dimensions for the table and you can add in like the bibliographic information. All right, but let's put that at the end because not many people may want to, uh, may want to look at that. So we'll put it at the end there. So going here, bibliographic information's at the end that can tell you uh, which critical, um, which critical text will have the text of the letter that, that you're looking for. Um, the last uh, then display option uh, or visualization tool that Palladio uses, we've used the map, the graph, the table, now we can look at the gallery. Um, this is really a, a really cool presentation tool um, where we're going to uh, base it on the name of everybody who's involved in this correspondence uh, web. We're going to include as their subtitle uh, the uh, any any title or position that they have, okay, um, and again these are all columns that I had in my original data set. Um, I have for uh, each of these tiles a description written on each person, and then we have a link out to their Wikipedia page. Again, this all this uh, the the link was a was a column um, on my uh, persons table, uh, an image URL, the picture. 
and we can sort by, let's say, the number of mentions. So the most popularly talked about, um, uh, or we can do uh, the birth year, so we can go youngest to oldest, however you want to organize it um, is up to you. Um, but then it kind of lays out all of the figures um, in a really slick way. And then if you want more information, all you do is you click on it and it links you out to the Wikipedia page for that particular person. So this allows you to visually present kind of who's involved in your project. Um, gives you an, an image, a little description of who they are, why they're significant. And then if you want more information, you can always establish a link out to uh, you know, a Wikipedia source or an encyclopedia source of some sort. Okay, so those are the four basic uh, presentation um, tools you have with Palladio. You can map, graph, table, or this this gallery section. Um, all of them, I think, are significant for the type of project that I'm doing. Um, one thing that you can also do um, is look at, uh, you can divide and kind of splice the data in a number of different ways. So we're going to next take a look at um, the different facets. Um, so you can organize the data and only look at one particular subset, um, depending on what you're trying to do.